Dr. Lewis, uh, you talked to Glaucoma 360 about uh, dry eye and glaucoma. Uh, you gave a discussion and talk about that. Could you outline your, your presentation? Yeah, you know, it's interesting with, with, uh, with, well, with dry eye uh, that we, it, it's, it's such a prevalent problem and, and the awareness of this is just ever increasing. I think with the, you know, the launch of the, the new dry eye product, Lithidograss, and using uh, Jennifer Aniston as a, as a TV commercial has really increased uh, patient awareness of their symptoms of dry eye. Uh, but that aside, this is a big problem. It's a big problem independent of glaucoma therapy. And, you know, when, when, as a glaucoma specialist, when someone um, doesn't have dry eye symptoms before therapy, they often do after we start them on glaucoma therapy. So the combination of an elderly population with the treatment we use for glaucoma often leads to dry eyes. The, pre the, the dry eye in general is a prevalent problem. It is. How more prevalent is in glaucoma? Well, the studies aren't as good as they are just in dry eye, and if you, there's about a half a dozen different studies. Uh, I think the, the, the Blue Dam study uh, was approximately 15% of the population had dry eye, um, but if you, as you look at an elderly, more elderly population, the numbers go up as high as 40%, and then of course when we're treating them for glaucoma drops, it's higher yet. So it depends on which study and what the demographics are, but it's high. It's high. It's, it's all the risk factors. You know, elderly population, postmenopausal woman, patients taking other medications, particularly dry uh, our glaucoma drops that aggravate the conjunctiva. So, so what, in, in terms of, of treating glaucoma, how how much does that set you back as a clinician? In, you know, you have to treat the glaucoma, uh, the dry eyes first, and then a glaucoma. Or can, how can you? Well, you know, that's a good question, and it, it, the issue here is, you know, we monitor glaucoma by determining visual function, visual fields, and, and other forms of visual function studies, and um, if, if a disease impacts the ocular surface, our visual function studies will be jeopardized by it. So patients with dry eye will, by definition, have some alteration in these visual function studies, and then when we, of course, treat them, um, we may be thinking that the glaucoma disease is getting worse when in fact their ocular surface disease is, is aggravating the visual function studies and it compounds the interpretation of those studies. So what, what's your take home message to physicians when you start uh, dealing with the glaucoma and dry eye? Well, I, I think many of us don't like treating dry eye because we haven't historically had good ways of treating it. Um, we use artificial tears and that acts as a, a moisture raising drop. We have better ways of treating it now. We certainly have much better ways of diagnosing it. Uh, we have better ways of treating whether it's meibomian disease, we can treat that. We have treatments for the evaporative forms of, of dry eye. Uh, there's a new form of treatment coming out with a neural stimulator uh, that's placed uh, through the nose that'll stimulate the, the nasal nerve. It's gonna be approved uh, soon. So we can treat dry eye and we, we need to address it. I think a lot of us don't like addressing it because we didn't have good options. We have good options. On the glaucoma side of it, I think we have to be aware that yes, we need to get their pressures down, but we also want to keep them seeing well. And sometimes the medical, medical treatment for getting their pressure down aggravates their visual loss and perhaps we need to go to non-medical means in these patients, whether it's laser or, or even mix surgery, uh, to get them off their drops, and I think we'll get both um, better function <clears throat> as well as better pressure. Thank you, Dr. Lewis, for your time.